say. Hi, welcome to the Science Behind with me, Guy, back for another episode. Now, previously, we looked at how we treat the water so it's safe for our customers to drink. But how do we get it to customers' homes? Well, two words, pumping stations. Now, before we do that, I need to find my colleague, Justine, who's gonna help me out by presenting this video. So let's go and find her. Justine, you ready? Yeah, let's go. Um, so, Justine, tell us a bit about yourself. <laughs> well, go. <laughs> um, so, what do you do for your? Yeah, so there? I'm a project manager in capital delivery. What's capital delivery then? So capital delivery, it's kind of a, the part of the business where we look at updating or adding new assets into the company. Right. Um, so what are you looking forward to hearing about pumping stations or finding out? Yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing what they actually look like on the inside because you always drive past them and you kind of think, what, what are they? So yeah, I'm just intrigued to see what they actually are. Got everything? Yeah, got five points PPE on, ready to go. That's what we always like. So this is it then? I think this is a pumping station, wow, yeah. Wow, yeah. So not what I was expecting, to no. be honest. And we're really high up, which I really didn't expect. Yeah, and it's cold and it's the first day of spring, I think. Yeah, it is. Good morning. Chris, how's it going? Very well, Guy and yourself, Justine. Yeah. Good, thank you. Yeah, good, thanks. So, couldn't stay away from the science behind then? Absolutely not, no, I'm glad to be back. Yeah, good to see you today. Yeah, good to see you. What, what are we going to be looking at then? We're going to look at a pumping station today, one of our pump sites. Excellent. Oh, brilliant. I'm really happy about that, because I literally know nothing about clean, because I'm in the wastewater, so I'm really excited to see what we're doing today. Yeah, good stuff. It'd be good to show you what we've, uh, what we've got out here. So, this is where the pumps are, yep. within the door here. Um, but I'm going to show you where the water comes from to then go through the pumps and off to where they deliver water to. So we'll probably get a view better on the, on the top of the reservoir. Brilliant, let's go. Let's go there. Cool, let's have a look. Well, I didn't expect it to look like this. <laughs> I know, it's fantastic views up here over in Huddersfield. Why do we need pumping stations? A couple of reasons really, we need to transport water and send it either into service reservoirs or water towers and someone's done a great video on one of those previously or directly to our customers. Where are they normally situated? Well as you know within Yorkshire we've got a lot of hills so the topography of the land means we need to move water uh, up, up hills basically and long distances. Right okay so, so where does the water come from? So the water, in this case and in a lot of cases, comes from our treatment works to other service reservoirs and then into locations like this reservoir, through the pumps and on to where they're pumped to, which I'll show you in a moment. Fabulous, thank you. Chris, what's the difference between pumping to a service reservoir and pumping directly to our customers? Okay, so there's not actually too much difference in the process of how it's done, but we have a bit more flexibility when we're pumping direct into a service reservoir as opposed to pumping to customers. Electricity costs are absolutely huge um, and we have more flexibility going straight to a service reservoir. We can pump through the night when there's a cheaper tariff basically for our power use. But if we're pumping direct to customers, that's basically on demand. We need to meet what they need when they need it, which is normally uh, kind of peaking at peak times of the day, morning and tea time. Well, this is the more I was expecting. 
This is a pump house, let's have a look at these pumps. We've got two pumps here. Do we usually have two or do we not have more? Yes, there's usually a minimum of two. Some of our larger pump stations may have three, some have four, some have up to six, but generally a minimum of two at all times. They're not the same size, no. Uh, the size um, and scope of pumps is dictated by the criticality of the pumps, how much head of water we're trying to increase and how much flow of water uh, and volume we're, we're pumping out, basically. So how do the pumps actually work? It's split down into three main areas. So we've got the pump motor or the impellers and they sit within the water itself. We've got the motor which is powered and then we've got what is called the control or the drive which basically kind of regulates or controls the flow of water going out of the pumps. So that was pumping stations then? Yeah, thanks Chris, well, that was really informative. Yeah, no problem, good to have you along, nice to show you around. Yeah, thanks for showing us around and being on the science behind again. Very much enjoyed as always. Excellent, we can't wait to have you back again for your third <laughs> one. <laughs> Okay, well, we better get back to the office Oh, then. yeah, yeah, they'll be looking for us, won't yeah. they? Right, come on, let's <laughs> go. It. Right, All right. Thank thanks you. again. Cheers, Cheers Chris, see ya, bye-bye. Right, so back in the office now, I've left Justine so she can get on with her work and it was just really good to find out about pumping stations. Good to see Chris again. If you've not seen his video on water towers, it's definitely worth checking out. It's in the description below, so give it a watch. And don't forget to share, subscribe, like, tell your friends, get the science behind out there. And in our next episode, we're gonna be looking at wastewater. So if you enjoy horrible, disgusting blockages and things like that, you're definitely going to want to be tuning in. And until then, I'll see you later. Bye.